Okay, uh, this is unbelievable. You should pay attention to this. The Tea Party and other conservatives may be celebrating Tuesday's election results, but some people are fuming. Tim Wise, who has been a regular guest on this show, he has blogged on his website a withering rebuke of what he calls the white right. He begins with a disclaimer that he is not referring to all white people and that his essay is not anti-white. He says it is addressed to, quote, the white community that is right wing. Tim Wise joins us now from Nashville. Okay, Tim, so I'm glad you joined us. Thank you so much, because I've been trying to get in touch with you and get you to do this. I was actually, I have to be honest, a little bit stunned when I read this, because your, your language is unusually rough and raw. We know that you yeah. tell it like it is. Um, you call yeah. the election results a temper tantrum, and you sound mad yeah. as hell. So you and I have <laughs> talked before. Do you regret using right. any of this fiery rhetoric? Well, no, not really, because I think, look, the right wing in this country, which is disproportionately, if you look at the exit polls, uh, being fed by older white folks, has more or less declared war on the last 100 years of liberal and progressive progress. I mean, Glenn Beck calls himself a progressive hunter and says the main goal for Republicans should be to undo the legacy of progressivism, which is like the last century of human progress, civil rights laws, environmental laws, labor laws. So I think when you have a group that have declared war on that legacy, which is by and large a very positive one for this country and the world, the rest of us have to fight back. And sometimes so the rhetoric does have to be raw. We can't always be friends and cooperate. Tim, do you, do you regret? You've gotten death threats because of this, haven't sure. you? Yeah, yeah, sure. And? I mean, I don't like that, but, you know, I, I, but the reality is the death threats are coming from people who very clearly don't have the capacity for reading comprehension. Uh, they are the ones who seem to think that in this piece, I'm blasting all white folks or calling for the, the death of white people. My goodness, I'm white, my wife is white, my kids are white, my entire family's white. It doesn't make any sense that I would do that kind of thing. What I'm saying is there are a lot of us white folks who reject the right, and in about 40 years, when half of the country are people of color who definitely lean progressive, even if there are only 25 or 30 percent of us in the white community who are progressive, that is is going to be a political majority okay, so and my Tim, point in this letter was they need to enjoy their victories while they can because they're not going to last forever so it's not sour grapes and it's not satirical oh no Oh, it's not satirical, and it's not sour grapes primarily because, look, I'm not a shill for the Democratic Party. I've been very critical of the Obama administration, as you know. I'm very critical of Democrats. What I'm saying is that the right wing's time is limited unless they can figure out, and I don't think they have figured out, how to appeal to people of color and young folks. When your rhetoric is, we want to take the country back, black and brown folks don't want to go back for okay. obvious reasons, by and large, and young people want to go forward. So well, I think it's a limited political trajectory. The reason I asked you about the, the satire part is because you usually blast people for language like that and you you blasted people before and here's let me let's read some of it you said I know you okay. think you've taken your country back with this election and of course you have always thought it was yours for the taking because that's what we white folks are bred to believe that it's ours and how dare anyone else say otherwise but you are wrong Tim mm -hmm. yeah well, that is what, now look, I've been white a long time, and i got to tell you that white folks in this country have long been led to believe that this is our country, that we are the prototypical American. I've done experiments with folks in workshops where you ask people to envision what's an all-American boy, an all-American girl, and virtually everyone has this image in their head of a white person. Now, that may be changing, and I think there are some folks on the right who don't like the fact that they have to share the designation of American with folks who pray different, look different, have different cultural traditions, but that's the truth. Truth and that's okay. the future, whether they like it or not. All right, let's go on. You said, in the pantheon of American history, conservative old white people have pretty much always been the bad guys, the keepers of the hege hegemonic and reactionary flame, the folks unwilling to share the category of American right. with others on equal terms. Right. And particular, look, I think if you look at history, who are the folks who have been the most reactionary and regressive? It's usually been older white folks. Younger white folks often are in the front lines of the fight for social justice, and we should always remember that. What I think is especially dangerous about the older folks in the Tea Party movement in the white community is they are the last generation of white Americans who can nostalgically look back on the pre-civil rights era and think those were the good old days. The reality is those of us in the post-civil rights era, thankfully, can't remember those days 
days enough to be gripped by nostalgia and yeah. longing for them. And, you and actually, I think the country will be better off when we are in a position of multicultural, multiracial America. That's the America of the future, not the America of the past. And and you write about sphere. that. This is about the 1950s. You said there won't be any more white folks around who think the 1950s were the good old days because there won't right. be any more white folks around who actually remember them. We'll all we'll be able to teach about them accurately and honestly without hurting your precious feelings. Okay, so you talked about that. This is one I wanted you talk about Ronald Reagan here. You said you thought you had secured your position permanently after the overthrow of Reconstruction in the wake of the Civil War, after the elimination of the New Deal, after the Reagan Revolution, after the Republican electoral victory of 1994, and yet those you thought you had cowed and defeated are still here. So, right. I mean, these are... People are going to accuse you of racism here. They, the word they'll use is reverse racism. We know there's no reverse racism. Racism is a racism no matter who it comes right. from. Right. Well, I mean, I think people need to read more carefully. The reality is, and I've written about this many times, there have always been white folks who have stood shoulder to shoulder with people of color to make this country a better place. And so clearly, if I'm critiquing the white right, I am by definition excluding all of those white folks who have fought for justice. The good news is there have always been those people and there still are. The better news is that in 40 years, when half the country are folks of color and half the country's white, it's going to be much harder for the right with their anti-immigrant rhetoric, their anti-Islamic rhetoric, and their rhetoric of taking the country back to a fictitious past to actually appeal to that increasingly black and brown America and I think that's going to be a good day for those of us who believe in progressivism and social justice. So are you then people will say also Tim that everything that happened on Tuesday that the people who were upset and the people who voted for Republicans to take over the house and all of that the Tea mm -hmm. Partiers are you are you saying that they didn't have a point that they should not have done that? Oh, no, they can do whatever they like. I understand that they have the views they have and they are free to have them. But the reality is those kinds of victories, going back to economic policies that frankly were ruinous for millions of folks of color and working class people, that's not going to endear you to those voters in future generations. So the point I'm trying to make is laugh it up, drink a big glass of champagne or pop a cold one or whatever it is you want to do, but understand that the clock is ticking and this country's future is going to be increasingly progressive unless those folks can figure out a way to appeal to the black and brown and frankly non-Christian folks who they often ignore and even ridicule.